TR1137, you know me. I do make a lot of you know me's. I really enjoy the variation of form within what is really a very small pot. You know me's have become something very collectible. A lot of people like to um, accumulate them because they feel that they can, in a small piece, gather something that says a lot about the the style of, of any particular potter. I tend to make batches of 10 or 12 of a certain shape, but within that I would make variations on a theme. So when I've sat down and made 60 or 70, I'll have 60 or 70 different ones. Um, I don't any longer try to make um, pieces that are identical. I enjoy playing with the um, orchestration uh, of the form. I also enjoy taking 10 or 12 pots, which are all essentially the same or very similar, and treating the surfaces differently. So you can see that in PR1137, for instance, as compared to um, PR1134, that the forms are very similar, but surface treatment, the glazing, the decoration is, is completely different. PR1183, a bottle. About five years ago, I built a two-chambered climbing kiln to be fired with wood. And um, in recent years, that kiln has taken up much of my attention. It took a little while to get the firings the way I wanted them, but um, the, the, the most recent firings have been very successful. On this particular pot, you can see on the shoulder of the pot where wood ash from the fire has landed and, um, and melted to form glaze, which was really the way that glazes came about historically, in that wood ash from the fire landed on pots. And once the kilns were able to fire to a hot enough temperature, the ash melted to form a glass. Potters noticed that and soon mixed the wood ash with, with clay that the pot was made from and real glazes were born. This particular pot has a very small amount of copper added to the glaze around the rim, hence that sort of lovely deep green colour. The clay is my own sort of version of a shigaraki clay from Japan uh, made with English materials but based on a chemical analysis of shigaraki clays. Stop PR1113 squared bottle. The Nuka glaze that you can see on this bottle is a glaze with a very high silica content. In the east, it's made from rice husk ash. In the west, because we can't get rice husk ash, I would substitute either flint or quartz. The very high silica content of the glaze means that some of the silica involved cannot enter into the melt when the glaze is, is melted and stays in the glaze uh, held in suspension and hence the, the sort of white opacity. On this particular pot, I've coated the pot with a thin red slip made from local clay that I get from the wood just above the pottery. And when the glaze was wet, I wiped the glaze away with my fingers to reveal that coating of slip underneath. So um, hence that sort of redness that one gets with the finger wipe. R1107 press molded bottle. The Temaku glaze, when it's fired to its best, is a really lovely, rich black uh, that breaks to red on edges of corners or ridges or handles. And what I've done here is to dip the pot into a thin red slip, which I make from a local earthenware clay when the pot is still leather hard. And then after biscuit firing, I glazed the pot with the temaku. And while the glaze was still wet, I've used my fingers to wipe away the glaze to make this 
sort of pattern. I just find that when things work well in the firing, the contrast between the deep black color and the rich red is just breathtaking. PR 1112, a jar with ridges. I love the way that the coolness of the pine ash glaze contrasts with the flame licked warmth of the clay at the bottom of the pot. I also like the way that the glaze has moved down the pot, pooling on all of the three ridges. This kind of fluidity is typical of a glaze made with wood ash, and um, the ridges are there to take advantage of that fluidity. PR 1199, a pitcher. This jug, together with PR 1200 and PR 1201, is a marriage, a coming together of two traditions. The Eastern tradition of stoneware, high-fired clays and glazes, and the Western tradition, the European tradition of, of jug making. PR1205, a charger. I really love to make these large plates. I make them from 35, 40 pounds of clay, and they only just fit in between the props on a kiln shelf. The glaze inside is my pine ash glaze, and over each of the stamped roundels, I've, um, I've laid down some nuka glaze, which moves down the side of the pot during the firing. PR 1271 to 1285 plates. These plates just to prove that I can still make large numbers of, of identical pieces. I gave up making production runs some time ago, but I still do like and enjoy making um, sets of plates. Each set is unique. When it comes to making the next set, I, I don't try to make them the same, uh, the weight of clay may be different, the measurements might be different. Um, each one, each set is a unique item. PR 1186, a bottle with lugs. I love to see a sense of adventure in pots. Um, if people see that in my pots, then, then that's great. But when I'm looking at other people's pots, I look for that sort of um, feeling that the potter has tried to push the envelope to take the pot to its limits in some way, whether it be in the making or in the firing. Um, 